a lot of times politicians will distort data or use data very selectively. And what I think we ought to do as voters is to basically use the tools, not just of political science, but of journalism, of history, of sociology, of economics, to better understand exactly what's going on in our country, and therefore which politician or which party is better able to serve our interests as citizens and as individuals. You know, I would be entirely happy, as I'm sure many other people are, listening to what I, you know, all the information that already confirms what I think I know. But the best way to really become an informed, sophisticated voter is to look at the blogs and the newspaper outlets and the commentators that you normally want to dismiss or ignore. Foreign commentary, for example, The Guardian, The Economist, um, British and international press and how they view the United States. Independent sources of information, such as the Congressional Budget Office, um, there are also other sources, there are think tanks, which mostly are partisan, but should nonetheless help us triangulate better what's going on out there. There's been a lot of fact-checking at the recent conventions. Um, in fact, fact-checking has become sort of a cottage industry, um, both among political scientists and among commentators. And that's really important, because it turns out that a lot of times politicians feel they can get away with murder, or at least with some you know, lies, damn lies, and statistics. And above all, I would urge voters to get out of their comfort zone. If you're a dyed-in-the-wool Republican, don't just rely on Fox News or on Newsmax or on your traditional news outlets. Instead, reach out to the other side of the aisle. Watch MSNBC. Um, get some of your news from the New York Times. Read the, the very sort of left-wing leaning blogs. See what other people are saying and why they might be saying it, more importantly. And similarly, if you're you know, a dyed-in-the-wool Democrat, Now's the time to actually start listening seriously to the more conservative vo voices on the other side, such as Charles Krauthammer, um, even Fox News, you know, whatever outlets you think are trustworthy, but nonetheless speak to a very different set of political sensibilities. Sometimes you, know, you might find yourself convinced by a different argument. Other times you might find you, all your worst suspicions about the other side have been confirmed. Um, but at least you know, there's, I think there's a, a much better chance of becoming a sophisticated voter if we do and try and force ourselves to get our information from unexpected and a lot of times suspicious um, news sources. The one thing we can do to become better citizens and better voters is to overcome this kind of bias, to try and sort of inform ourselves, gain new sources of information, gain new sources of data analysis, and try and sort of wrest ourselves away from these comfortable habits of the mind. <laughs>